Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the Lurk Raspberry Pi 4 case. Uh, so this is going to just be a bit of a hands-on unboxing for the first time. I've never seen it before. Um, I'm going to then uh, show you the install of me putting it in the Raspberry Pi and then we're going to see what the temperatures are like and then maybe compare it against uh, another Raspberry Pi 4 that I have that isn't using that case and just using a typical uh, Raspberry Pi 4 case. Right, so this is the, I didn't even really know how to pronounce it, but I guess it's like the Fluke <laughs> uh, Raspberry Pi case. Uh, it's for the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, and I got this on Amazon. Um, it's it's meant to be a, a good way to keep your Raspberry Pi cool um, and it's also a nice looking case. So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll get it open um, and then I'll put the Raspberry Pi 4 in that I'm going to use. And then maybe we can just see some temperatures of what it um, runs at. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's have a look. So just quickly on the back, you can see that it's got a thermal pad and um, aluminium housing. Uh, so that in itself pretty much creates like one big heat sink. So it just um, gets rid of the heat a lot better because if you know this is my Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment so this is it here let me just pull it out of its case oh, let me pull the SD card out so this here without these heat sinks this thing gets hot and even with them it still gets quite hot and say if you're running a Plex server it thermal throttles quite a bit so you really need a dedicated case with like a fan or something similar. So this is where I'm hoping something like this could come in. So let's open it up and see what we have. So this is the first time I'm opened, uh, opened it. I've never seen this before, except for on camera. So let's open it up. I'm also using a tripod, so excuse me if it's uh, a bit tricky. So in here we can open it up. So this is the bottom. See, we've got a few screws here. And you can see here, this is the um, the part here that the will sit on here. So it's like a thermal, so I'm assuming in here there's the thermal pad. Yep, there is. So what happens then is that you have, get rid of this here, and then that will sit up on this um, bottom here, and it, the whole case pretty much becomes a big heat sink, right? And it looks really nice as well. So let me just quickly go through and um, make some room and I'll put the heatsink on and I'll put the Raspberry Pi on and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so it's seated in there now. I haven't screwed it in, but that's kind of what it looks like. I think it looks quite nice. Everything lines up nice. So let's put the bottom on now. And that kind of just sits on there like that. Let me go grab a screwdriver and I'll screw this in. So that's thermal screwed in. Looks really nice. It's very like just slick. Um, it doesn't look like anything crazy. Um, so just again to show you comparison between the official Raspberry Pi case. So you can see there, as you can see, there is also still a slot for the indicator lights. Just it's just tucked in there nicely. Nice. Cool. Right, so let's grab that SD card, which is here. Plug that in. Just like so. Right, SD card's in. It doesn't um, extend over the case or anything, which is nice. Right, let's plug it in. Um, and then we'll see the thermals and kind of what it looks like. But for now, what we'll quickly do 
is we'll plug it in and I'll show you what it looks like just sitting here powered in. Right. Okay, so uh, power uh, in the side. So let's plug it in. Let's look for that. There you go. You can see the, uh, the indicator lights there. Nice. Let's plug some ethernet in. There we go. So those are the indicator lights. Again, the indicator lights aren't really hidden or anything by the case, so you can see it all nicely. Right. So I'm going to go back to my desktop now, and we will connect to this, and we'll just run some uh, heat tests, and just see what the idle tests and stuff are at. So that's, that's the main thing there. Um, so yeah, I'll see you back when I'm on my Mac. All right, we are back on the main screen here on the Mac. Now, I have connected to the um, Raspberry Pis. So I'll put above here. Um, so on the left hand side is the Raspberry Pi, Pi with the um, the new case and the with the flirt case. And the one on the right is a one with the typical official Raspberry Pi 4 case. Okay. Now, other than that, they are identical. Um, now the one in the Raspberry Pi Pi 4 case, the official case, um, has a um, just a little heatsink on the uh, CPU, but besides that, it's all stock, all right? Um, so yeah, left hand is Fluke, right hand is the just the general official one with no crazy calling except for a simple heatsink. Now, what we're going to do is we'll look at the idle temps. So both of them have been running uh, for a while now, um, so we should be able to see Kind of what they're idling at uh, normal so let's see what the flirk case is running at so that's running at about 45.2 degrees celsius now let's see what the uh general raspberry pi one is running at so it's running at about 53 um okay so there's a little bit of a difference there and the flirk has been running for a while longer um idle than the um, standard raspberry pi um so the standard raspberry pi could still be coming up a little bit um, but we'll probably just take it there. Okay. Let's just kind of round it up about there. Now, what we're going to do is now let's stress test them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a tool called stress and I will run a, a bit of a, a CPU test on them. Um, and we'll just get the temperatures as this goes. So let's just quickly install this on both of these. Right, so I've just installed that on both of them. So now um, what we've got here is a command that I can run, which will run the, um, or measure the temperature and while it's doing a stress test. So let's grab this and it's going to run for 900 seconds. Okay, so each one of these are going to run for 900 seconds. So let's see how these fare um, together. So let's run that and let's run that. Now let's just watch. So after it will happen every 10 seconds, we will see what the temperature is like. So I'm going to just let this run and then um, I will come back after this is done. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, it looks like it's finished, but it's also starting again. So let me just stop that before it continues going. And we will check out what we've got. So it looked like the 
um, there's over a 10 degree difference uh, between the two, which kind of makes sense, right? Um, you, you would expect a bit of a difference between the two. Now, it is hot. Like, I'm, I'm holding it right now, and uh, the, the, the Flirk case, and you can't hold it for too long. Though. That is hot. So you can tell it's using that whole case as its heat sink. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, normal case is hot to the touch, but nothing crazy, but that heat sink inside will be really hot. Um, so definitely worth, like that's, that's 10 degrees difference and, and that's under a lot of stress, right? Um, so this would be really good. So what I've had issues with and why I'm thinking, you know, why I got the case in the first place is that I've had a Plex server before, right? And you try streaming HD video. And what happens with a lot of these Raspberry Pis is that they thermal throttle, right? So now you're, you're trying to watch Plex or like a video or whatever, and it just keeps locking up. Uh, uh, it gets real, you know, jittery. Where you've got a good, you got good cooling, um, and you don't want any fans or anything like that, that case is going to do the job. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Uh, covered, you know, what it was how it all goes together and what it's like in terms of uh, stress testing and temperature uh, compared to just a official Raspberry Pi case. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab this on Amazon for yourself. Uh, but besides that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.